Hi and welcome. Uh, my name's Paula Ormondy. I'm a renal nurse and researcher. I'm here with Catherine today, who's an IgA nephropathy patient, and we're here to talk about the symptom fatigue, um, which is a, a really common symptom that many patients experience. Um, and actually, there's not really that much information about it. So we're here to make a video to provide a little bit more information to help people understand um, what fatigue is. Catherine, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm Catherine and I was diagnosed with RGA vasculitis 21 years ago and I received a kidney transplant from my dad six and a half years ago and fatigue that we're going to be talking about today is something that was definitely a, a massive symptom for me um, throughout the last uh, 21 years. So tell me what it was like on a day-to-day -day basis managing a symptom like fatigue. Um, so pre-transplant, um, it was hard. Um, to start off with, um, I, I tried to get on with, with normal you know, daily life. Um, my job um, at the time when I went into work, um, it was quite good because I did different, different shifts. So some days I might start at, at nine, some days I might start at five. So the days that I started at five, I knew I could have a lion in the morning. I'd really base my life around around sleep and just making sure that I could get enough sleep. Um, however, as my kidney disease progressed, um, I definitely got more and more tired um, and, and it did really start to impact upon um, my work life and my social life as well. Fatigue can have a dramatic effect on your life and some patients find that they can't continue working even before they start dialysis. Mm -hmm. Were you able to continue working? What strategies did you use to to maybe maybe do that if you yeah so um, initially um, when I left my previous job where I was doing different different shifts um, I, th I then did go into full-time work um, in a children's centre and I did manage that okay actually for the first year a um, couple of years um, however I did find that at the weekends I literally wasn't able to do anything because I was so tired from you know work, working all week, um, and it was quite an active job as well. I was always on my feet, so I did find that at the weekends I'd, I'd just spend myself, you know, I'd just spend my whole time in bed, just sleeping. Sometimes I'd sleep for 12, 14 hours, um, and, and it was really difficult because obviously that that then impacted upon my social life. Um, you know, I'd, I'd find that I wouldn't really plan things for the weekend because I knew mm. that I would be tired. Um, and then as the years went on, I, I did have to decrease my hours at work. So I went from full time, um, then I went down to four days a week. And then the, about the last year before my transplant, I went down to three days a week because I just could not cope um, with the work. Um, and even then when I went down to three days a week, you know, I'd, I'd get in in the morning and I'd just sit at my computer and I'd just stare at the screen because I just couldn't process anything because I was so tired even with you know reducing my hours so it definitely did have an impact um, upon upon my work life and social life. Uh, and did you did you tell your consultant about that? Did you tell your doctor about it? No do you know what I, I really didn't I think because um, you know so many people suffer with it and I think it's just one of those things that people go well you know well you've got kidney failure you're going to be tired I think it's something that you you learn to live with. Um, you know, I was, I've, I've been ill for so long, 21 years, that over time, even though my kidneys were gradually, the, the function was gradually decreasing, um, I, I, I just kind of learned to live with it. Mm -hmm. um, it was just part of, of who I was. Um, and, and, uh, strategies, yeah, yeah, and, I, and I've had that experience as a renal nurse, watching patients who just manage it. But actually, it's really quite important to report it to your doctor. Mm. Um, there are causes of fatigue that your doctor can explore. And it's important for your doctor to ask as well yeah. um, whether, you're, whether you're suffering with uh, mm. the symptom of fatigue. Um, so there are different reasons why you might experience fatigue. And one of those is, um, for, for example, is anemia. Mm. So as your kidneys um, reduce in function, they also may stop producing um, a hormone called erythropoietin or EPO. Um, and that makes red blood cells, which helps you, um, gives you energy around your body. So therefore, it's really important that your your doctor explores um, 
whether that whether that's a cause of your fatigue. Did you experience any anemia or anything? Like yeah, that? I did. So um, quite a few years ago, um, I had to have um, some courses of uh, iron infusions. Um, so I had those, which did work really, really well. Um, I then had to have injections of Aranesp, which is really similar to, to EPO. And again, that worked really well in building up my, my red blood, blood cell count. Um, and then when I was on dialysis um, prior to my transplant, um, I did have EPO through the dialysis machine. Um, however, although I'd been really well with the um, iron infusions and the Aranesp, um, I found that with the EPO, it did I mean, I had really high blood pressure anyway, and I found that it really increased my blood pressure. And that's interesting as well, because um, another cause of fatigue is blood pressure medication. Mm. Um, so your, your doctor needs to be looking at whether your medication is making you more tired. So um, there's lots of different things that are interacting. There's also whether you have the right nutritional um, value, you know, status in your body, whether your nutrition is good. Um, there is also um, whether your electrolytes are stable. Um, so there's lots of different investigations that your doctor can do to perhaps um, find a cause of some of the fatigue. Mm. But as your kidney um, disease progresses, fatigue can also get worse. Yeah. Did you experience that at all? Yeah, definitely. And I think the only time that I can remember reporting that I was excessively tired um, to my consultant it was about seven, eight months prior to my transplant, where I really, although I'd always suffered with fatigue, I just found, I, I just knew in myself that this was a lot, a lot worse than normal. And so I did have bloods done and it was found my kidneys had deteriorated quite a lot, um, quite quickly. And then obviously there was discussions about dialysis. Um, but I think, yeah, that's the only time that I did actually report it because I just kind of got on with it. And I think that's what a lot of patients do. You just accept that it's part of um, kidney disease, yeah. although that's not the right thing to do. You know, looking back now, I should have reported it because, you know, like you said, there are other, are other things that can contribute to fatigue. So one of the one of the biggest hidden problems with fatigue is that your body becomes deconditioned. Mm. Oh, what's that? Um, when you when when your body becomes deconditioned, you you sort of suffer some muscle wastage and weakness, um, where that because you're not using the muscles, you're not doing as much. Mm. You therefore um, those muscles start to waste away. And so this can lead to a serious disability for some patients. So it's really important that you continue to stay at least some um, active in some way. So you do a little bit more or you set yourself some goals to keep doing things and moving your muscles and, and making taking action to do things mm -hmm. um, in order to keep your muscles um, in, in a good condition. Did you find that you were advised to do any exercise or did you force your, did you have any strategies like that to do mm. more or no so i was never that was something that i was never really aware of actually i don't know if it's because um my job was fairly active anyway um possibly but it's definitely something that was never really talked about um with me um i think that I always would try to push myself though. Um, so I would always, you know, in, instead of someone else making a, a drink for me, I'd get up and I'd walk and do it myself. Um, I'd always try and go for walks and things like that. Um, it, it would be quite a struggle sometimes and definitely towards, you know, when I was nearing towards transplant, you know, especially the last year before transplant, um, you know, if I was out walking with someone, I would have to keep stopping um, because I'd be so out of breath and I'd be so tired from it. Um, but so I think, you know, maybe if I had been advised to do that, I, I might have done more. However, it's quite hard to find the motivation to do that when you are so fatigued. So it's a bit like a vicious, vicious it circle. It's like a vicious really. circle. Mm. Um, if you were going to um, give a patient some advice about fatigue or even what strategies or how it, how you managed it, what would be the key things that you would tell someone? I think to definitely report it to your doctor um, or your consultant and not to just accept that it is the norm because I think, you know, I, I accepted that it was the norm and a lot of my friends that have got kidney disease, uh, you know, just accept it and just 
kind of workout strategies around that and how to relieve some of that fatigue. Um, so I think definitely talking to talking to your doctor. Um, you know, it, it might be part of the kidney disease because fatigue does get worse as your kidneys, you know, your kidney disease progresses but it could be due to other things like anemia that we talked about. Um, and definitely just to set yourself little goals, even just if it's walking up the stairs, just to keep your muscles active and just to keep you a little bit active. It, for someone else, that might be something quite you know, small, but for someone that's really fatigued and suffering with kidney disease, it's quite a big thing to do. Okay, so from a research perspective, there is lots of uh, studies going on in the UK to look into the um, causes of fatigue and how we can help patients manage this symptom better. Um, were you um, involved in any research, Catherine? Yeah, so I've done quite a few research studies. Um, the most recent one that I did here at, at Leicester um, was to do with the impact of exercise um, on the heart and, and how it made you feel. So I did roughly two or three sessions of high intensity exercise um, for around eight to 10 weeks. Um, so I did that with a researcher and actually that definitely, it did make me feel better. Um, exercise was something that I was definitely a bit worried about doing because I'd never really ventured into that um, and just due to being you know not not very well um, it was something that I was just always a bit worried about doing and, and pushing myself too far um, but doing the research study was brilliant because you know there was always a researcher there um, you know had my heart checked it was it, it was really really good and it inspired me to join the gym as well um, and to you know keep that ongoing exercise which is obviously really beneficial um, you know for my transplant and for you know to try and combat fatigue really good for my heart as well so so if I was a patient and you were trying to convince me to do mm. exercise, I would think that was crazy because I'm feeling so tired. But yeah. did you feel much better with yeah. exercising, just doing a bit more? And I definitely did. And, and it's good to be in that environment as well. And just to know that the exercise is doing a really good thing. And the results at the end of the study showed that my fitness levels had got better. Um, I was definitely less tired, even though I'm post-transplant. You know, I, I can't lie, I do still get weeks where I am really tired. Obviously, I still take medication. So all of that has an impact. And doing the research study, yeah, it was definitely beneficial. Thanks, Catherine. That's been really useful. I think you've shared some really valuable information that will help people understand fatigue better. Um, there are lots of studies in the UK that uh, researchers are doing to understand fatigue better, to understand what strategies to advise patients um, to be able to manage the symptom. Um, so if you want to be involved in a research study, please contact your kidney doctor. If you want more information, you could also go to Kidney Care UK, which offers information about fatigue as well. Um, but we hope that you found this video useful. Thank you.